Hey guys, Metal Jesus here, and uh, today I am finally doing something I should have done a long time ago, and that is taking a look at the Mr. Project. Yeah, I know, I know, I should have did this a while ago, but as they say, better late than never, right? And to be honest, there really isn't a bad time to take a look at this because the project is always evolving. There are so many people involved in working on this, creating new cores for it, new bug fixes that, you know, even in the last year, there's been a lot more support for it. So in many ways, it's a really great time to take a look at this really awesome device. Now, I was certainly familiar with this on a high level, but I hadn't actually sat down and messed around with one, and perhaps you are the same way. So let me talk about kind of what is the Mister. So the Mister's project's main goal is to try to accurately duplicate and recreate original gaming hardware. I mean, it's a very versatile device, and it does this via FPGA technology. Now, what's cool about that technology is it's proven to be very accessible and very configurable. The benefit of FPGA is that you get near 100% compatibility with great performance with minimal input and video latency. I mean, it's really impressive stuff, and it's the reason why you see it so often in other devices like, say, from Analog, their clone systems. Anybody can jump in and start messing around with this open source project, but you're going to need a couple pieces of specific hardware, starting with the FPGA board called the DE10 Nano. This is the heart of the project. However, there are a bunch of add-ons that you can get that you're probably gonna want and what are inside what I'm showing here, including a USB hub, uh, some additional SD RAM, also some audio and video outputs. And by the way, I should mention that this device here was sent to me by a website called mraddons.com. Uh, they sent it in here for review, but you don't have to use them to get started. You can get a lot of these pieces just easily available on amazon.com. But I do really like how this thing came fully assembled in this nice case. And again, as you can see, there is a bunch of stuff going on here. I guess we'll probably start with this end right here. One thing you're gonna notice is that you have two video outputs on this. So you have HDMI, which is something obviously you would expect, but you also have analog video out. So it basically will dual video out for you, which is great for streamers, or you, know, you have an option here. So you can get it on your HD television, or if you have a CRT like me, well, it looks fantastic. And as you can see here, I've got a bunch of stuff plugged in there. I mean, it's very versatile. So you see a USB keyboard, a USB mouse. I also was using a wired Xbox 360 controller, although you don't need to. Uh, with a little dongle, you could actually use a wireless controller. It also has support for audio in and audio out. Um, you know, and that's just scratching the surface here. So. Yeah, it's a very versatile little device. Now, it seems to me that arcade support is probably the heart of the mister. It seems like most people use this device as a kind of dedicated arcade machine, especially since it has that analog video out. And because of that, a lot of people are working pretty much every day to you know, faithfully recreate some of their favorite arcade boards. And so I just played a ton of arcade games on this. and you can immediately tell that they play and feel very close to the arcade original, especially when it comes to, you know, something like input latency, of which there is, you know, practically none. And keep in mind what the Mister is trying to do here is 100% recreate the original arcade hardware. So it's, again, very impressive, especially when you output it to an old school CRT. <sighs> side by side, it's just no contest. The CRT looks amazing. And it's funny because I'm guilty of this as well. You know, the whole world has moved on to big 4K HD televisions that are basically the size of a wall. But then you run these games on the display that they were meant to be on. And they're beautiful. They're gorgeous. Honestly, it's hard to go back. I was going back and forth because I can see both at the same time. I much prefer the CRT. That's not to say that they don't have scan lines and filters that you can apply to most games. I mean, it's good. I mean, they're fine, but it's not the same. One thing I wanna mention about arcade games and the Mister is that again, these people who are creating these cores are trying to 100% you know, reproduce that actual hardware. And because of that, a lot of arcade games actually were designed to be, I guess they call it 
Tate mode essentially on its side. And so every once in a while, you just need to be aware that this happens, but every once in a while you boot up one of these old games and the, and the game will be, you know, on its side because it's designed to be built into an arcade cabinet where it would have a tall and skinny monitor. So just be aware, you just have to go into the options and you can usually just rotate it. But I thought that was pretty interesting. You know, and speaking of arcade games, a lot of people were very excited to see that there is really great support for the Neo Geo on the Mister. So, you know, if you want to play all of those classic Neo Geo games, uh, you know, through a CRT or obviously going to your HD television, they look and run fantastic as well. And I should be clear, there's not just arcade games available on here. There is a bunch of support for consoles, handhelds, and also old school 8-bit and 16-bit computers. Let's go ahead and take a look at some of that stuff. Here you see a list of consoles and handhelds that you can mess around with. And a lot of the usual suspects are here, no big surprises. I think what I was happy to see though, it was much bigger than just, you know, the, the obvious ones, right? Like the Super Nintendos, the Nintendos, the Genesis. You also get some really interesting ones here like Astrocade and the Vectrex. That was kind of a nice little surprise. And I'm not entirely sure how much this gets used because there are a lot of ways that people can play, you know, emulated and also recreated versions of their favorite consoles. I, 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 I don't mean to discount it. I think it's pretty cool that they, you know, that support is here. And from what I can tell, actually they look and run just fine, but there are a lot of options for that stuff. And so, um, again, I think it's really cool to have it all built into one device like this. I guess that's one of the big benefits of the Mister is that they try to put everything on here, right? Uh, but I don't necessarily know if this is going to be the main way or the main reason why someone would buy this. I think it's a, a nice to have. Also, I should probably make it clear that the Mister Project doesn't actually come with any copyrighted games, just the ability for you to play them. So you'll need to provide those yourself, you know, just like you would any other solution like this. I'll be honest, one of the things I was very curious to check out when I heard about this was its support for old school computers, because that is something that you don't typically see, you know, not in not in devices like this. And I know that there is a big push on this device to get support for a lot of these 8-bit and 16-bit computers. And so that was one of the first things I also wanted to check out. And I'll be honest with you, the results are a bit of a mixed bag. You know, I was really excited to see how this would run games for MS-DOS because it has a 486 core on here and it, it appears to run or at least try to emulate up to about 90 megahertz. However, as I ran some of my tests, you know, some games would run fairly well, but some of the 3D games, it felt like it didn't necessarily have enough power. And so here you see some of the early 2D games. And for the most part, these work just fine. I was running some of my favorite Sierra adventure games. Like uh, you see here, I have Gabriel Knight. Um, this is the non CD version, but I suspect it probably would run the CD version just fine. Uh, and then I also had King's Quest seven here, which I was surprised this runs pretty well, especially considering that this game was a pain in the butt to run when it first came out. It was a nightmare to run. And uh, yeah, there were a couple of hiccups here and there with the digital audio, but the game itself was perfectly playable. You know what might look better on your nose? What? The bar. <gasps> now don't mess around with me. All right, all right. I got your keys, but I don't know nothing. Here you see Full Throttle, one of my favorite adventure games, and this one ran, well, it ran pretty good. I mean, the intro gave me a little bit of problem because it seemed like it was having some problems trying to access the, the virtual CD-ROM drive. And so I couldn't tell if, if I was just getting impatient and not waiting long enough, or it was actually locking up. I mean, the game would continue. It just seemed like it was taking a little bit too long. But once you're actually in the game, yeah, it it ran and played just fine. I'm trying to do my art in here, buddy. I don't got time to waste on bums like you. It was when I started diving into some of the 3D MS-DOS games that, 
you started seeing the limitations of this core. So right here you see Duke Nukem 3D and it's running okay, but it's not running great. Now it's been a while since I've ran Duke Nukem 3D on actual hardware, but I think it runs better than this. And here's an arcade racing game called Screamers. And yeah, this will make you scream. I mean, this is like a slideshow. Now this was a game that would also push the hardware back in the day, but ugh, that's pretty rough. Again, that that's a performance issue. That is basically, you know, just not having enough power. I got pretty similar results playing with Descent 2. Now this is definitely running a little bit better than say Screamers but it's not really playable. Uh, it's, I mean, I guess it's impressive that it runs it at all, but yeah, it's definitely struggling. Here's a game that I was very interested in checking out. That is the original NASCAR. Now it actually is running NASCAR fairly well, even though it looks like it's running at a fairly low frame rate, but that's actually how this game ran back in the day. The reason why I know is because a big portion of a year while I was at Sierra was trying to get this damn game to run. <laughs> it was a nightmare to run back in the day because it required so much DOS memory. I honestly, I didn't think this would run on the Mister. I was really surprised. But what's great about it is that when you boot it up, it gives you the ability to choose how you want to configure the PC memory. And so once I kind of figured that out, I was like, oh, okay. And it ran, so yeah. And so really, I think there are two things that the Mister would need to better run MS-DOS games better, especially the 3D ones. And basically it just needs more power. And so I'm not entirely sure what the limitation is here. Maybe it just needs another generation of, of say, you know, an FPGA or something like that, maybe down the line. Um, I would say probably it needs the equivalent of a 133 or better. Um, you know, megahertz processor. Also, if they could somehow build in support for the 3DFX Voodoo cards and 3D, you know, 3DFX video acceleration, that would go a long way. But then again, maybe it's a little bit unrealistic to think that this device would really do any of that at all. I mean, you know, small Windows based computers are out there and they usually run MS DOS just fine. So, you know, Perhaps at the end of the day, having this type of support built into the Mister is not really that big a deal at all. I mean, I was kind of considering it a bonus anyways. The other system I was very curious to check out is the Commodore 64. And actually the Commodore 64 support on this is really solid for the most part. I mean, most of the games I threw at it ran really well. There were, there were a few that I, I ran into problems with. I'm not entirely sure why. You see, uh, I'm trying to run Rambo 2 here. And for whatever reason, it just couldn't get past the load screen, no matter what I tried. I don't know if it's necessarily a setting on the Mister or it. It could also be the the you know the copy of the game that they're using here. They're back in the day, a lot of people would crack these kind of games, and some of them were better than others. So that could be the issue. But for the most part, actually, a lot of the games are I you know a lot of the Commodore 64 games I threw at it worked just fine. One thing to note when it comes to Commodore 64 games is that some games need the joystick to be in port one, and sometimes they want it to be in port two. Now, there is no standard, which is really annoying because that's how it was on the real Commodore 64 back in the day. So if a game isn't starting for you, just go into settings on the Mister and then choose the swap them option. That'll fix it 90% of the time. Another thing I ran into with the C64 is that some games seem to be running at a different speed than I was expecting. For instance, you see uh, Park Patrol here, which is one of my favorite games growing up, and I could tell it was off a little bit. Something was different about it. Now, I didn't know exactly what it was until I went into the options on the Mister, and I noticed that you could set the video from PAL to NTSC. Obviously, I was expecting the NTSC version. I did that, rebooted, and then this game ran just fine. So be aware there are a lot of options when it comes to running these games. So you'll always wanna go in there and double check. And so I didn't really mess around too much with the other 8-bit or 16-bit computers. I pretty much just stuck with the ones I'm primarily familiar with and grew up with. But as you can see from this list, there's basically everything that I think that most people would expect to be here. And honestly, some that I've never even heard of before. And so overall, what do I think of the Mister Project? Well, I have to say it's very ambitious and it's very impressive. I mean, just the 
just the amount of work that has gone into it and the flexibility of the device, it is incredibly impressive. I mean, it's gonna do, I think, what most people will want and then some. However, I think it does come with two downsides. And the big one is it is currently more expensive than say your typical $100 clone system that you might get. Like I'm talking about the mini systems that, that came out a couple years ago. You know, those did a really good job giving gamers kind of what they wanted on a budget. And you know, for the most part, I think people were really happy with those and liked the performance of it. Some of them kind of better than others. But the thing is, the Mr. Project is definitely next level and it's it's not gonna be for everybody. I mean, if you wanted to just get one pre-configured with, you know, just the guts of this with no case, it's gonna cost you anywhere from $350 to $370. Uh, if you want to get one like I have right here with the case, all set up for you, it's gonna be about $450. So it's an investment. The other thing is that while the Mr. Project is pretty well documented and there is a ton of help out there, setup and using it is not gonna be for everybody. To get this thing going on your own, you're definitely gonna need to be able to follow online instructions fairly closely to get everything working and pretty much bug free. And honestly, even then, sometimes you're gonna kind of run into some weirdness. I certainly did as well. Had to reach out to the community for support. The good news is because it's so popular and because so many people are involved in it, there is just a ton of help for this thing. There are people out there that know the ins and outs of this. And honestly, pretty much anything you'd wanna do, you will be able to get running on this. And like I said at the beginning of this video, it doesn't appear that the support for this is waning anytime soon. Like just in the last year, they've added new systems and new cores, new arcade boards. It's pretty active. And so those are my initial impressions of using the Mister. And I think where this is gonna end up is sitting right next to my CRT television. I mentioned before just how mind blowing those arcade games look on that big CRT and with the analog out, there's no latency. I mean, it's the closest I've ever had in my house to true arcade reproduction. It's it's impressive. But I would love to know what you think of the Mr. Project. Do you have one in your game room? Or are you thinking about getting one? And what if they start adding support for PlayStation 1, Saturn, Dreamcast? That would be amazing. All right, guys. Well, thank you very much for watching. Thank you for subscribing and take care.